Hi everyone, Ralph here from the library. Thanks for coming back for another visit and letting me share with you a thought or two today. You know, one of my earliest remembrances of a library take me back to my days in grade school. I can remember the times during the week we would go to the library and the librarian would read us a wonderful story would tell us where we could find other good books to read, would show us where the reference section was, where the periodicals could be found, and taught us about a categorization system known as the Dewey Decimal System, and how it was broken out into 10 major groups, and each group began with the number 000 and went up to the number 999. Of particular interest to me today would be the 200 section, which contained all of the religion books. Well, here in my library, I don't take time to categorize the books by the 200s. I do so by subjects and types. So for instance, all of my New Testament books are found in one bookcase on two or three shelves. So I have my New Testament introductions, New Testament dictionaries, my New Testament commentaries, and my commentaries would be arranged from Matthew through Revelation. I do the same with the Old Testament books. And then on another bookcase shelves, I have all my Bibles, I can find all my systematic theology and biblical theology books in, a, in one area. It just makes things easier for me. Well, you know, another very important section in my library is what I refer to as the biblical history section. And that reminds me that history was always one of my favorite subjects. Uh, in seventh grade, growing up in New York State, we spent the whole year studying New York State history. We moved on to the Revolutionary War, on up through the Civil War as we studied American history. And then we studied European history and world history. And then we went back to American history and government. But you know, a study of history from the perspective of where we grew up and the people around us, even if we bring into that mix other peoples and other cultures, is ultimately incomplete if we leave out the Bible. You see, as a follower of Christ, the perspective that really is of most interest to me is what I refer to as biblical history. And in that sense, revelatory history. Because as I study the Bible, I see that God says that there is a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And as history unfolds, it tells us that one day there will be a day when God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And all of the in-between reveals to us his heart of love for humankind. Because the Bible says that God created man in his image. And it goes on to say he created man in his image, male and female, he created them. And in his love, he placed them in the perfect environment. He put them in the Garden of Eden. And God blessed them with all that they could ever really desire. And even more, he gave them a wonderful gift. He gave them the gift of choice. Man could choose to love God or not to love him. Man could choose to obey God or he could choose to disobey. And as we read in the book of Genesis, when temptation was introduced into the story, man chose to disobey God. And in choosing, in essence, he chose not to love God and the goodness of God. And mankind was plunged into a disease that we refer to as sin. But you know, God loved his creation, man and woman, so much that he promised a rescue. 
He promised that one day he would send his son into the world to rescue man and woman from the penalty of sin. And so we read of his promise of a savior. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. He promised that he would be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And so God so loved the world, his creation, that he sent his one and only son into the world that whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Jesus came into the world to show us how to live in relationship with the Father, to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love him in a way that we would ultimately be fulfilled. And Jesus dealt with the sin issue. He died on the cross, a death he didn't deserve to die, but willingly chose to die to pay the debt that I and you could not pay. Jesus gave his life so that there would be a way for us to be forgiven. And when we place our faith and trust in what Jesus did on the cross for us, the Bible says we receive eternal life. This revelatory history we see to be salvation history, for it shows us how we can be reunited to God in a loving relationship. And you know, I believe that if you read the Bible from the perspective of salvation history, from the revelatory history that shows us how God has provided the way for us to have a relationship with him, the Holy Spirit will help you see your need and ultimately see your salvation in Jesus Christ. And I hope you'll do that today, that you'll begin to look into the scripture from the point of view of salvation history and find how much God loves you and how he has provided for your salvation through his son, Jesus, who is the way, who is the truth, who is the life. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for my friends that they will have a desire to read your word from the perspective of revelatory history, salvation history, to see just how much you love them and care for them. They will find that you are true to your word, that you love us with an everlasting love, a love that pursues us each and every day of our lives so that we might come to know you in a personal way through your son, Jesus. We pray that as we seek, we will find and we will know you. We ask these blessings and these mercies in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Ralph here from the library. <laughs>